Hey everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. We've got a mixed week here in regards to their new headset product unveiling, but tons of deals getting awarded and signed, and a good amount of news too that I haven't made videos on yet. But all this is happening at the same time as the geopolitics of the world with the horrific events on both sides down in the Middle East here happening to the civilians and families. So looking at the stock first, another volatile week closing around 7% up actually for the week. Now we were reaching into the 18s a couple times actually in the middle of the week, but selling pressure soon started to take place in that area there. Now this mid $17 range that we've settled on is still on the upper end of where we've been since that $20 run up, but falling back down to the 13s. So possibly there's many catalysts coming up here with earnings next month or maybe closer to the NHS contract. So we'll see how the market reacts to this. Now, what was all the news happening this week? Barta Science, whom is a movement health company that has worked with the DOD and other civilian agencies through the years. Now, they'll be using Palantir FedStar to securely run services on IL-5 required contracts. This greatly appealed to me when it first came out because it's the intersection of Palantir's bread and butter of the military slash government with healthcare. Now, the applications in the military are a no-brainer with training troops, but also rehabilitation and recovery. And then there's real studies already with the Air Force in regards to postpartum exercises to get female service members back into the groove. So check that out for more detailed thoughts. The next video, Palantir revealed their mixed reality headsets with their two products, which is the software aspect on the back end. Now, I go into my thoughts in detail, but right now, officially, this is on the defense end only. The military applications are obvious to me where this can eventually get down to the individual soldier level over time on the battlefield. So communications and plans can be adaptable as more data comes in real time from satellites and other units with actual visualization overlaying reality that can be split between life and death. So I wholeheartedly believe this will change the battlefield itself and will affect the course of history on who is leveraging this kind of technology here. Now the fog of war can be lifted for everyone's eyes in as close to real time as possible with this kind of technology and this will inevitably exponentially be greater than those who don't have access to this technology. Now if both sides have it, it may be just who has the better algorithms in the end. Now, the commercial applications I also speak to in that speculation here in the video, every industry can use some form of mixed reality for training purposes and simulations and run through decisions before they're even made and having it in a visual manner. Being able to see how different options can affect the outcome can optimize the decision making of individuals all while seeing their downstream effects on others. And I even speculate this could be some individual civilian customer use over time, but I wouldn't hold my breath yet. This is a game changing technology in my opinion for Palantir and we'll see where this goes. Now, for some deals also that happened that I covered, Palantir released their PR regarding the $250 million three-year contract with the Army. This was already covered on September 26th on Defense.gov, but it really goes to show that some of info comes out later with a little bit more details and officially, so it's just nice to see them put this out there on the record on their website, but wasn't anything new. Then Palantir also joined the SOSA Consortium, which is the Sensor Open Systems Architecture, which is a group of companies and organizations that are trying to openly set the standards for software and hardware for the government. So putting this together, this commonality can reduce cycle development time where there is a shared set of understanding here and a shared level of security. So it's just great to see Palantir having a seat at the table and being a part of this. Then, Palantir released more videos on their YouTube channel. Won't go into detail here since there's so many of them, but when you have a chance, take the time where you can get nice snippets of information from different clients where I really enjoyed the IRS's experience working with Palantir. You can always watch them on fast speed too to knock them out much quicker. And then we got a new deal that went under the radar awarded from the NIH to primarily the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus and its partners, which Palantir is mentioned as a sub awardee. It's a $30 million contract for the base of 18 months. We don't know how much Palantir exactly gets, but at least they are a part of this. And there's also an option for four additional years based on funding and success. So I give more thoughts on the potential of this deal and the added clues of Palantir's success in healthcare. So check that out if you'd like. And then lastly, Palantir also posted a blog post on Thursday regarding their AIP boot camps. So no crazy numbers given away here, but management still is saying there's overwhelming demand for AIP boot camps. And I think some explanation given away shows that the low barriers make it a good draw for customers. And the point of the boot camp is not to give away the fish, but to teach the customers how to fish on their own and also to have more imaginative use cases of outside of the chat features of AI, but rather automation on different processes in your organization. And it really comes down to that. Here, these participants can make AI their own and define how their AI architecture should be set up. And best part is, it's all industry agnostic. So come one, come all. Hope this really pushes their customer numbers up in the coming quarters, and this really helps. 
Now, what I haven't made videos on, there's a ton. There were a couple deals with international governments, Spain's deal with Palantir is under their Ministry of Defense for their intelligence side. They ran a trial for around 250,000 euros, but with that running successfully, they were able to leverage that into a larger 16 and a half million one. So the article then goes on to some of the frustrations they have with low or no competition that Palantir has. But in the end, what I'm reading is that they really aren't finding solutions out there except for Palantir. And then another smaller deal with the UK government. It's a one and a half million pound contract for only five months. So it sounds like a trial period as well. But we'll see if this leverages into a larger deal later on. And it's nice to see them continuing to expand their business into different areas of the UK government, which is their second largest market. And then on the healthcare side, they won a six million dollar contract in the United States from the Department of State for the medical provider portal. So all these government contracts add up. And it goes to show all the stages that Pouncher is winning them small, large, new and mature relationships. And then the big upcoming earnings to see any progress with customer accounts, at least for me, has been officially announced finally. It's been a while, but they'll be doing a pre-market earnings release on Thursday, November 2nd at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So I'll make sure to get up early that day to digest the news. I know it's very different than what we're used to with the after hours, but maybe they're just changing up for their own pace. And then Pouncer takes a very public but not surprising stance for the Middle East conflict here happening between Israel and Hamas. They said exactly certain kinds of evil can only be fought with force. Pouncer stands with Israel. Now, for the whole Israel and Hamas situation, and a warning first, remember, I'm going to be focusing on it from a Palantir investor perspective with taking a side because going into a company like Palantir and being a part owner of it, you have to know that going into it. So at the end of the day, I'll go over my own personal views, kind of, it kind of seeps through as a shareholder and what that means, but feel free to skip that, of course, but more deeply as a shareholder, the region as a whole and the history behind it, who has claimed to the holy land, it's always going to change on your perspective and when you cherry pick history. I'm obviously not an expert in the history of itself or the consequences of what's going to happen from all this stuff, but it can still be conflicting to me of how shareholders feel about holding the company with different levels of weighting and how you feel about a company but also having the financial thinking about the risk on and off scenarios regarding the stock and their philosophy and when these kind of events happen. Now, even though there was some sort of turmoil when Ukraine was invaded, it was pretty cut and dry, I would say, from a Western perspective here. So Palantir is not trying to hide their support here, and I'd rather have it that way than some covert way of supporting their side. But I don't think I'd have to say it. But personally, the humanitarian side of civilian casualties on both sides, I'm very sorry to see this happening in the world. It's the same in the Ukraine and Russia and conflicts ever everywhere in the world when we are talking about the governments here, but the actual civilians and families living their lives are just like us are the ones truly suffering. So I'm thankful to be in the country where I'm at in the United States and the situation is so remote from this that I'd never have to experience this kind of hardship. So I'm trying not to come off as biased here. But being a long-term shareholder who shares the mission and vision of Palantir and is aligned with the West, you should already know what that means in regards to the conflict. So I'll leave it at that. But what are your thoughts on all this news here? I know it was jam-packed. Let me know below and thank you all for watching and appreciate my channel members and I'll see you in the next video.